G'day listeners, Aaron here. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to say that we had a few issues with Google Drive and downloading and then Gareth's gone on holidays, so I can't actually get the raw audio to fix up the inconsistencies and the missing bits, but I've done my absolute best. Thank goodness Gareth and Vin were in the same room at the same time because I've been able to pick up Uh, each other's audio in certain places where their microphones have picked it up. It's been very, very faint. I've had to uh, amplify that sound, and it sounds really, really shitty. Um, However, at least they were through proper microphones, so therefore it is still kind of listenable, as opposed to other times in the past where people haven't used a microphone, and therefore amplifying it sounded really, really shit. Anyways, I won't waste any more time. Again, special thank you to Vin for joining us for today's episode. My deepest apologies for the sound issues. Next week sounds much better. But anyways, on with the show. Welcome to the Blooming League of Original Podcasts. And welcome to another edition of Thrash and Treasure, the Torture Chamber musical comedy podcast where two nerds enter the squared circle in an attempt to lay the smack down on each other's musical taste. I'm Gareth, and joining me, as always, the hornswoggle to my Chris Jericho. And if you could smell what my co-host was cooking, it would be KFC. Hi, Aaron. How you going, mate? Oh, hey, Bert. Hey, funny that you quote The Rock, yep. because I've been trying to pick a fight with The Rock on Twitter for a few years now, but he doesn't take the bait. Uh, it's weird, isn't it? Why not? It's because he's too busy trying to be president. He's scared. Of, yeah. He is. The Rock for president. I'd vote for that. Did your balls just drop for a minute there? You sounded a bit deeper. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if you were going to get my, my WWE. Um, oh, is that what that was? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually added the, the rock bit at the end because I know you love KFC and I thought I just needed to add a little bit. And I didn't think you would know who Hornswoggle was or Chris Jericho. So. Refresh your tails. I spent another 50 bucks on KFC the other day. Nice. I, I told you, didn't I? I told you. You did? Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Yes, I've been. Uh, how was your week? Rather than KFC, we, we could be here all night, but we won't. Okay. So your week was crap, was it? Um, nothing interesting. I, uh, yeah, it was all right. You know, there was nothing, there was no highlights. So <laughs> not really. It was just, Wait, this, is this not a highlight? No, it's, it, this will be. Yeah. But when this airs, it, it, it'll be, it could be July or some fucking thing. So who knows? Anyway, that voice that you hear in the background, Aaron, I want to tell you about that person. Oh, guess what? what? There's your segue. Go on. Yeah. We've got to get, <laughs> yeah, guess what? We've got a guest. Oh, do we? Yes. Oh, you have friends again. I actually got a guest in the same room as me right now. I, and I'm here of my own accord. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I shall introduce our guest. This next guest needs no introduction, but he's going to get one anyway. He has graced both stage and screen. It's pretty handy with a DSLR. For the first time in thrash and treasure history, a man who literally embodies the heavy metal musical crossover. He puts the tequila in tequila sunrise, and he's not afraid to slap on a bit of makeup to tread the boards or chuck on a pair of moss shorts and scream the house down. Will we get him or his alter ego? Let's just take a minute to breathe and welcome the man who many say, with a microphone in his hand, has reached singularity. Throw your horns up for the front man of Perth metal heavyweights, Tempest Rising, Mr. Vin Trigariitis. Close and I love it. All right. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) (laughs) How you going, mate? Not bad. Good man, that was a mouthful. I love the little sprinklings of the Tempest Rising I songs do in you there. Like the songs there, that was good. Yeah. That was good. When I run out of ideas, I throw in songs. What are you talking about? It's your only idea. So just letting you know, if I've reached singularity, that means I've collapsed in on myself and I've and I've died. So no, I just thought you became one with one with the with the technology. He's been here for five minutes and you're already trying to kill him for crying out loud. That's meant to be my job. <laughs> The technology yeah. of which ref- which technology you're referring to? Well, just any fucking. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, that's true. Yes, I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to wedge things in that don't fit, <laughs> and that's as close as I got. I like so, it. I yeah. like it. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate no, it. It's a pleasure. It I is a pleasure. I love the concept. I love the concept. It's a funny thing because when we started, like uh, when Aaron suggested it, 
it it just none of it made any sense. It was just ridiculous. It still doesn't. To no. be fair, <laughs> no, still doesn't. anything that comes out of my mouth doesn't make any fucking sense to you right away, Gareth. It takes about oh, yes. an hour of explaining it to you in plain English. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's that, that's probably true. It is, but it's working. I don't know. Yeah. Somehow it's working, and we're finding lots of crossovers. Mm. So, um, and a lot of our guests. Uh, discovering a lot of them have been musical theater people and they're discovering metal which is fun the last episode well episode i just listened back to a guy from um an australian i gave him lamb of god's latest album mm. and the the face he pulled was <laughs> it was just worth it it was worth it just for that that's the deep just, end if there ever was one <laughs> i think i went in a bit hard yeah on that one. that's yeah. a i mean that's heavy it was pretty heavy good yeah good yeah it was pretty heavy so, but that's all right. And I still haven't forgiven you. <laughs> no, I know. I know, but I, I'm wearing, I listened back to it and I'm wearing it like a badge of honor. And to be fair, listening mm. back on that episode, that was done in five sessions. Yes. Right? Uh, the people at home, uh, well, those who follow us on Twitter may have heard my, or read my tweets. Uh, as of recording, it's only just, the episode was posted yesterday. And I've spent yes. a month and a half on that episode because the original recording for our guest was shocking and then it got worse <laughs> progressively worse through the episode by the end of it you could barely hear anything from him and me so it is basically 80 percent adr and it is yeah. hours and hours and hours and hours and hours like you would not believe of painstakingly sitting there going through the timing going through the reactions having Gareth come in with his yep and his laughs and his stuff like that. Um, so if it was anyone else, we would have been fucked. But um, yeah. I'm going to pat myself on the back and say, okay. I did a good fucking job with that. Right? You did, so you did a great job. Thank you to me. You're welcome, me. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on from that episode, please. Because we, we were given a couple of albums to, to review and I was given... <sighs> Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> so I want to say you're you're the non musical lover, Gary. Oh yeah. And Aaron's the non metal lover. Yes. And you guys definitely do not like those. Do not like them at all. Okay. A Aaron's aware of Metallica and Megadeth. But but that's not metal anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just easy. Yeah. We stay away from, we we tend to stay away from them. Except um, last week we did Metallica. We did. We did S and M. Because our guest insisted, so you can no, do it. Guess no, actually, that wasn't how it happened. But okay, anyways, continue. Yeah, yeah. It was literally, can we do Metallica? And you frothed at the fucking mouth. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, I don't need to. Know. Anyway, we got. I was given, and I always have to de deep breathe around a Jesus Christ superstar. This thing's been done a million fucking times. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say, Aaron, I think he sent me every performance of jesus christ superstar <laughs> via spotify and i'm like no no i'm not listening no, to that no, no. i sent you that. five of the 25 that like i listened 10. to fuck you very much you got off lightly one of them was in dutch two of them i think were in dutch <laughs> anyway we ended up with a i think it was a german mm. one but in english yes yep. so uh, i did listen to it um you, you listened to it i did yeah okay okay yeah. so did a bit of research for coming here, guys. Some, oh, you professional, did some yeah, yeah, professional. Of course, of course. Um, listen, to listen to the album. That's the main thing. Yeah, I got, I got two albums to listen to, so oh, we all did. Um, anyway, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, goody. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna preface this by I the the single first Jesus Christ Superstar that I watched was the original. A, it might not be original Australian, but it was the John Farnham. Yeah, fucking, it's not an actual whatever. production. It's it's like just them singing in a in a. It was in, a, in, a in concert around, in around. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I it bored the living yeah. shit out of me, and I just. But went, in 1992, it was the tits. Okay. Yeah. That that yeah. arena tour was fucking massive, like you wouldn't okay. believe. All right. We so moved, yeah. Respect. Anyway, yep. Sorry. Okay. Go on. All right, respect for yeah, respect know, for Jesus. Fans he could sing, and there was I think what Kate Sobrano was in it, and it was just like anyone who's anyone was in in the nineties was was yeah, it Russell Morris? It bored the living shit out of me. I was just like I don't I can't do this, and then I got sent the I got hold of a copy of the was it twenty eighteen CBS did a live NBC. Shoot. 
Live, NBC. Jesus Christ okay. Superstar, okay. which we talked with, about in last week's episode with F. Michael yeah. Haney, in case you... F. Michael Haney, who was yes. in it, and was along it. with um, John Legend and Alice Cooper. That was a, and a whole different... That was a big production. That looked, It looked amazing. Yeah, but was it as well sung? Um... Like, like I, he's a good singer, obviously. Like, like he's a phenomenal singer, but he he doesn't have like Jesus' voice is is rock. Yeah. And well, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. I thought this doesn't this doesn't make sense. So I finally picked one really good part of that whole performance, um, and it's a little bit it's a bit obvious, and I'll I'll tell you about it anyway. But the one we saw, the one I based my whole review on, was uh, w- what was it, Aaron? Hang on, let me let me bring up the album. So talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Okay, it's um, I always go to say Gethsemane, but that's it's not Gethsemane, mm. obviously, because that's well, that's one of the it's songs. Gessam Taufnachme. I don't know. Yeah, it was a German record. It was a German yeah. production, though. Yeah, and, it uh, was live in 2011. The, yeah. Um, mm. oh, was it 2011? Yes. Okay, so first up, old mate. Misha Mang. I don't know if that's how you say his name. It's probably Misha. Um, he's got this real... I picked up a real Bruce Dickinson vibe about him. It's just that that kind of voice. And I went, okay, I'm giving you five points for sound like Bruce Dickinson, and I'm taking five off because you're not. <laughs> so, because he's the best. Well, that's petty. I know, but that's the kind of person I am right now. I've noticed. I'm, I'm petty. I learned that from you. Oh. Um, also, I I did not know... I'm not petty. Everything's All Right was from Jesus Christ Superstar. I'm so... I, that song? Yeah, I didn't know it was famous outside of Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. It was stuck in my head because I knew, like I didn't know the whole song, but I knew that everything's all right. That I knew the melody and then that, that kind of earworms me. So. Do you know why? Because it was a single in 1992 from that arena production with Kate Sobrano. Oh, there it is. It was Kate Sobrano. That's what I was going to say. Now, that, that filmed production of it is actually illegal and it was leaked. Oh, well, I didn't watch it then. Yeah, because um, <laughs> there was a whole problem with the record company, with having all these rock stars from different record companies yeah, getting yep. the clearance and the rights to have that filmed production released. It, it fell through. But also the soundtrack or the cast album was never... They never released a full album mm. of it because of certain songs they couldn't get the rights to. So um, Could We Start mm. Again, Please, which was recorded... Never made it to the album, but was put on um, Kate Sobrano's single or album. Okay. Oh. So there was all okay. these problems, I think, with Mushroom Records uh, or something like that, um, and the really useful group. We can't or, speak ill of Mushroom Records anymore. Oh, Ma- Michael you know. Gadinsky, obviously, rest in peace. But he died, um, I, I think it was Mushroom, or it, it might have one of them at the time. Um, one of I don't know the full story, but either way, that got leaked. Thankfully, it did. But I watched the Tim Minchin version on at Easter. Okay. I haven't seen that. Who did Tim Minchin play again? He had to play Jesus, wouldn't he? Yeah, no, he played the Gareth role, Judas. <laughs> That's the better character. Everyone wants Judas. Well, this also had Sporty Spice, yay, and some <laughs> dude from reality TV, like the whole reality competition where they cast it. So He was phenomenal. i got to be honest, though, it's really not my favourite, even with the Melanie Chisholm. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was was sh- it because there was scaffolding? Yes, there was scaffolding. <laughs> okay, lots of scaffolding. I didn't need it, but it, it was just basically a big staircase. And that's all it was. And it was, yeah, it it was. was too restricting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, was it? didn't he produce that, though, Tim Minchin? Didn't he produce it? Oh, shit, maybe. Oh, love scaffolding and love Tim Minchin. Come on our show. We want Tim Minchin on. Yeah, Tim, you're awesome. Um, anyway, moving on. Okay, so I didn't know anything. everything was all right. So there you go. And I felt stupid. And then Vin's backed me up. So that's good. So you're both um, stupid. There's <laughs> a song about some hoe called Anna. Yeah. I don't know. What the go about that is? Nah, it's Hosanna, hey, Zan- it's like a chant to say, Hosanna, hey, Santa, Santa, you're a ho. Really? Oh, there was Ho Anna. No, here he comes. It's not like he has arrived, or oh, because when I was when I was looking up that um, Hillsong jump all over that song and they play it with their guitars and shit and yeah, which kind of made me want to run away screaming. So. It, but that's funny because when Jesus Christ Superstar came out, Christians and Catholics hated it. Sorry, mm. it's funny because I, I was talking to my girlfriend about it, and she's a um, recovered Catholic, and, <laughs> and she said when when it came out, she was not allowed to listen yeah, to Jesus sure. Christ Superstar. They had to watch listen to Godspell, which came out at the same time because that was the nice one. No, but they were just as controversial because neither of them represented the resurrection. Oh. 
That's why it was controversial. Maybe it had was nothing to do album. with content yeah. or music. It had everything to do with the fact that they didn't c- removed the resurrection, which is the point of Christianity. They keep remaking the musical, so technically he lives forever. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, so I, I see the placement of Superstar as that. Superstar should be done in the cave, and then at the end of it, he comes out as resurrected. Put the but it'd be cool if it swapped into a Superstar. zombie, sorry, a zombie musical at that point. Uh, like everyone's just like, what I, the I, fuck? I, <laughs> <laughs> he just comes out and starts eating the that's disciples a, and shit. Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Are yeah. Working on that oh one right man, now. <laughs> legit. Would, that would, would be that. phenomenal. Anyway, moving on. Because I'm only halfway through my bullshit. <laughs> um, Simon Zealots, the song, right? Robbie Fowler, who's singing it, just fucking hits it out of the park. This, yep. I, I was just like, yep, I stood up and paid attention. Um, yep. But after that, it all gets a little bit boring and Jesus has some friends over for dinner. Um, he calls him on their bullshit, but he doesn't actually do anything about it. So he's a bit he's a bit like an expert on maths, honestly. He's just like... On what? Yeah. I'm going to throw that in there for the three people that are watching maths. What's that? Anyway, he gets a, he gets arrested and he does some pilot Pilates. Um, That's Gareth delivering a pun. So I'm not sure what's, what's going on there with the Pilates, but there you go. That's Gareth making up for failing to deliver said pun. Um, King Herod's song. Did you like that? After seeing Alice Cooper do this, no one else can do King Herod. Bollocks. He comes out and it's, it's so, it's just Alice Cooper and he's the best. So psst, everyone. That's it. Mm, Game over. No. Sorry, everyone who wants to play the King theatrics. Herod. The theatrics. Yeah, he just comes out and he just plays up to that You're caught shit up in the name. Massively. You're giving a standing ovation to the name, not to the performance oh, yeah. there. Every time. No. I'm, I'm not worthy. But the, I, I didn't watch it, but oh, yeah. I will watch it. Yeah. No, he was he was good. He he played up that one. It was probably more um, Alice Cooper than King Herod. Yes. But, um, it's ha- but it's hard because he plays such a... He plays such a villain on stage anyway, so I think it was quite easy for him to get into the the King Herod type thing. So anyway. He slept through that number on NBC Live. I'm sorry. Uh, All respect to Alice Cooper. He slept through it. He really did. That, That Okay. The King Herod song is the most... Versatile number in musical theatre ever. Oh, I don't know about that one. For casting, for instrumentation and orchestration and, and interpretation, right? You can do anything with that number. You could have a child come out and it would be hilarious and still make sense, right? Because it would just be anyway. over the top and silly. That's mm. what it is. King Herod, as a character or as a person, was over the top and silly. He was the original Trump. He wanted to build a fucking wall. Right, that's what King Herod wanted to do. So think about it. There's Donald Trump right there. You could do a Donald Trump send up with King Herod. Please don't. And if you do that, I'll fucking punch you in the face. (laughs) Right? But you could put anyone in that part. You could put a woman. You could put an old person. You could put a young person. Anybody. And it would be hilarious. So it is the most versatile number. And if anyone wants to challenge me at it, game on. Anyway, Alice Cooper did the best. While we're chatting about NBC Live's JC Superstar. Here's a deleted snippet from last week's episode with F. Michael Haney. Enjoy. Um, could, just on, right. on Jesus Christ Superstar, in terms of the rehearsals, <laughs> were those John Legend or all that, were they there during your rehearsals or were they too precious to be there? I don't. I won't put Ooh. it in the show. Like, no, 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 no. no, no I, I think there's, there's nothing hidden about it. Uh, John had, they prepped him very, very well. And then right mm-hmm. before, because of scheduling, he had a, a, an Asian tour. He he flew oh, and okay, yeah. he he joined. He, he worked with the cast for a couple of weeks and then left and then came back the week of production. And again, like not not this is not about him. This is about the show. Jesus kind of waltzes in and out of that thing. He's got a lot of work to do, but mostly yeah. anybody walking can just be like this way, Jesus. And he goes, "Thank you." Like it's so it's it's different. Like for Judas is the star of that show. Oh yeah, and mm, and yeah. I mean we had one of the, the most incredible Judas's you, you, you could imagine with Brandon Victor Dixon. Um, and he was the only not remarkably famous person that was in a principal role. I put that in huge <clears throat> quotes because he's a, he's a legendary performer. Um, but I, I will say that like Sarah Bareilles, Alice Cooper, everybody else, they were there as much as they could be as their schedules permitted. Mm. Um, but also because Alice's song is, it's a punch it was a one commercial in and out he got to do it by himself um 
he rehearsed mm. separately and then came in, did it a couple times. And yeah. he just came in and crushed at the show. So what we had as an ensemble, there were about like 20 something ensemble members. Every single one of them was a Broadway principal <laughs> with insane credits. It's, I mean, it's remarkable. Um, yeah. But so in inside internally, we had a company of actors who could step in and sing the principal roles during rehearsals for spacing. And so like yeah. this guy, Justin Sargent sang Jesus and he does not sing Jesus like John Legend sang it. He sang it much more traditionally the way that show has been sung by that super insane tenor and justin Sargent is one of the most incredible vocalists i have ever encountered in my life and his gethsemane the i i watched an entire group of actors in a in a basement where we were rehearsing because we had to be hidden um we all stand up and give him a standing ovation after he finished it in rehearsal because we were like no one's ever going to hear you sing this like this is not going on nbc <laughs> yeah. live you did this yeah. for no one and uh, damn it you're amazing and so we did we had an incredible group of of it like inside team understudies who would cover while they were gone and in the event that something happened if john for whatever reason fell and broke his leg and couldn't do the show justin could have gone on it would have been fine justin would have been amazing uh, the ratings mm. would have been strange um was that a jab at rent live oh i i it literally did, was not intentionally a jab at rent live um i i was i was heartbroken for that cast um because having yeah. done two different live shows every everything everything is leading up to one day and it's yep. impossible it's unfair to the actors to say yep. hey we're gonna prepare for a long time and then you get one shot at this and it's not the mm. super bowl it's not the world no. series it's not the world cup where you go oh my god i can't believe he kicked it over the crossbar like what an idiot he missed the upper 90 on a penalty kick he missed the field goal he he, he, he missed he dropped the ball on the on the five yard line it's not that yeah. you go well, he's a bit of a shit singer, isn't he? <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. what happens to actors. You don't yeah. go like, hey, imagine these vocal Olympics having to do them live on television. Oh, mm. ever sung live? Yeah. You idiots. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I was... I hate I the response on Twitter. You're not the idiots of in the story. Um, but no, I, I I was really happy. Like, to, to say very seriously that being part of that was the first time I've ever been part of something that was considered a critical success in my entire career. Everything else I've done was either a sleeper hit or wretchedly reviewed or like, mm, it just didn't work out. But like that was all of a sudden we won, uh, you know, an Emmy, I think we won a Grammy. Like it, it was just, it was so well received and the design and everything. And I was just honored to be a part of it. It was, it was mm -hmm. a flash in the pan. The whole thing was in and for me was in and out in like a month was yeah. doing the yeah. whole, the whole production. I disagree on the design. I do not need any more scaffolding oh, in Jesus Christ Superstar. Please, we're done. Normalize no scaffolding in Jesus Christ Superstar. Please. But it Please. gives actors stuff to hang on. No, no, we don't need it. I'm sorry. We've done it. We've done it a hundred thousand times yeah. everywhere. And you know, have you noticed every time there's a new Jesus Christ Superstar with scaffolding? Yeah. Everyone tries to reinvent that wheel. Ooh. Uh, mm. but, but it's not it's doing the same fucking thing over and over. I'm, I'm so incredibly passionate about this just wait till next week's mm. episode i'm gonna lose my shit i can't wait to hear about it. this <laughs> no, i can't wait to do it because we're going to have a guest is that in next week's episode yes with yeah ben, no which, that's what we yeah, were don't, doing don't, we were... yeah you wouldn't want to shit on your guest's show you know <laughs> regardless of you know <laughs> regardless what do you think of it This summer, winter, spring, or fall, the first ever musical theater sitcom where you go behind the scenes of the latest West End show, The Fosse Forest Ballet. Where's the important stuff? Aha! A thousand pound a week ensemble rate. Ah, that's what Mamma Mia likes. Starring Philip Joel and a West End cast featuring Carrie Alice, Darren Denny, Louise Demon, and Oliver Savile, and more. It all started in 1987 when I was a jobbing actress working in a diner. Yeah, it's just I, I had a really bad experience when I was touring Australia with a wombat. <gasps> Darling! Mwah, 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 mwah. How long have I been mentoring you? Three months? Two years. So her name is Henrietta. The horse. Yes. I've managed to secure you an audition for the biggest, most innovative, and the latest show to be going into the West End. Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat. Think more along the lines of Panto. Frozen. 
much of this episode for the price of a coffee. Simply go to www.thefussyforestbelly.com. Any and all profits go back to theater charities, acting for others, and the theater's trust. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll see a grown man in sparkly tights. Tight nights. Nice tights. Moving on. Oh, and it's my dream role as well. King Herod, I said that a couple of episodes ago. I want to, yeah, I do. I really want to play that part. Just to, to every night do it differently. Because it's because you get to be in this whole big musical and you only need to sing one song. And generally it's the most popular. Yeah, it's a show-stopping number. Yeah. Give, me, give me the Herod money. Give yeah. me the Herod money. That's what I want. It's a cameo you, role. Give me one song. You, you're going mm. to, when um, big productions of it, you're always going to get somebody famous in that part. Yeah. So there's a filmed production of it from 2000 that has Rick Mayall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, Rest in peace, Rick. Yep. They, he'd be a good King Herod. You can hear versions out there that have women playing the part. So as I said, it's, it's the most versatile number in theatre. Anyways, continue on. Best title of any song in the production. Uh, Judah's Death, but I'm just calling it now in this one. That's the bottom line. Three stars. Three stars. Well, okay, that's probably better than... Out of ten or out of five? No, it's out of five. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's not yeah. horrible. Because there's some nice guitar work in there, and which could have been... There's some great guitar. The music is fucking electrifying. Which could have been better. I mean, there was a chance where they could have just ripped a solo. But that would be deter... Like, you know, going oh, too yeah. far away from the source they, material. There is a story being told. <laughs> yeah, it's source material. Yeah. Source material. Now, this, this is... A, we've talked about it in the past, about rock operas and musicals and the differences mm. between the two. This is a rock opera, okay? And the, the, the difference between the two is a musical theatre, the cast will smile and sing to the audience. In a rock opera, the cast will shout and spit at each other. <laughs> so that's why there's a lot of Judas and Jesus going at each other because that's what a rock opera is that's what opera is is the two characters going at each other in song so um and and in this because it's such a familiar story and it's such electrifying music when um i've seen one production of it and i know vin hasn't seen any he's only been in one of them only one that's all you could manage (laughs) just one (laughs) there's never been one that i've been around for oh exactly so Shut up, Gareth. <laughs> Anyways, the production that I saw, the, the set sort of seeped out into the audience and it wasn't scaffolding. There was no leather pants. There were no fucking guns. <laughs> there were no mobile phones and there was no reporters coming out with cameras going, Jesus, tell us what you did or whatever it fucking was. <laughs> In every single version you will see out there that will advertise a groundbreaking new production. Fuck off. <laughs> it's not fucking groundbreaking to do the same thing the last fucking production did, all right? However, this was in a temple. This was groundbreaking because we were actually in those times. People were in costumes that they wore back then, and then you had this electrifying music. And I tell you what, it smacked me the fuck around. It was amazing. I've never seen a production like that. It was just so in your face and loud, and, and it wasn't trying to be all look at us we've got guns look at our priests they're running around with mobile phones we've seen it done bored of it already um where was this jesus uh, all of them one? all the did, productions you did, see will be modernized oh right not vin's production he said did you see my production no i did not because it was it was musical theater it was modern i saw yeah, an modern. advertisement for your production vin and it said groundbreaking <laughs> uh, there was scaffolding wasn't there well, so okay, so <laughs> let me <laughs> let me just well, hold on a sec, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. So, all right, so it it was when I did it, a fairly, uh, you know, the company yeah. was quite new, yeah, and so they only had scaffolding as a low end production. It was it was awesome what they did with it. They did a modern version, which I personally wouldn't have done. Take yeah, okay. take it back. It was like Jesus was the the um, headliner at a, at a festival. Okay. See, that that just sounds... Doesn't that sound boring? No. Uh, it, look, I enjoyed it. It was my first major <laughs> role in a, in a musical, so I enjoyed it. Sorry. All right, look, I had a great time. Um, 
mm -hmm. the visuals I would have gone for. So how did the crucifixion work? So what happened was, so the, the Christian um, sect, I don't know what they're called, would, left me. And they displayed that via like, you know, like your Instagram or Twitter follow. You were cancelled. You got cancelled. Oh. So, you know, that kind of was like, oh, yeah, okay. I would have preferred to be crucified, but... <laughs> a bit more dramatic yeah. than just yeah. losing a few Insta followers. Yeah. I promise you, Vin, it's, all my comments have been long-standing for a long time. They have nothing to do with your production that you did or anything like that. But that's the thing, like, I, I hear and see, you can see them on YouTube all the time, interpretations like this... Right, very similar in the way that they're done and and modernizing it, right? But the advertisements or the the you know any sort of media that comes with it will be selling it to me as a groundbreaking new production. That's what pisses me off. Fuck off with your fucking groundbreaking. All right, you wanna you wanna break new ground on Jesus Christ Superstar? Turn back the clock, put them in in um. I, I don't know what the, I don't want to use the incorrect term because then I'll get cancelled for being culturally inappropriate for what fucking clothes they wore back then. But whatever they wore back then and, and sandals and stuff. Rags. Rags, yes. Okay. You're going to get cancelled, not me. So, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, That's fine. That will be groundbreaking because we haven't seen that 50 million times. Do it in Spanish with the old clothing. That'll blow people away. Oh, actually, I did see one production. It was completely nude. Really? It was, yeah, it was really good. Was it on Pornhub? Damn it, that's where I saw uh, it. Ah, there it is. I saw that one too. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did those 39 <laughs> lashes go? 39 turkey slaps. Yeah. It was way yeah. more than 39 when I was yeah, watching it. Was, yeah, they were counting those. Anyway, so I gave it, yeah. So it's three, it three stars from me and... I still I don't understand how it's been done a million times, but because it's amazing, the music is amazing. Sex sells, okay. Gareth. Sex and sells. Yeah, sex sells, and and Jesus is sexy, like he. Right, Jesus is sexy. Have you seen those ads? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think because he starved himself. So I can't remember. Yeah. That. But like yeah. that that image, yeah. that ideal of him is meant to be that he is not necessarily sex as in sexy, but he's meant to be that ideal. So um. Yeah, it's, uh, F. Michael said last week that Jesus sort of floats in and out of the show. I disagree with that because I think he's um, he's definitely the counterbalance to Judas, who I do think floats in and out of the show and is completely wasted, is Mary Magdalene. And she could have a lot more. Ooh. Apparently Gareth had a joke for us here, but the audio has been lost. So this is how it played out. Okay. No, I won't. I want to hear it. How bad is it? No, now it's built up too bad. It's, just, it's probably going to be terrible. So much. Go on, Gareth. Let's pretend we haven't. Let's pretend we didn't hear it, Aaron. <laughs> anyway, so apparently Gareth has a joke for us. What was that, buddy? Wait, hold on a sec. Let's let's laugh. In three, two, one. Don't you know how many times that joke's been said, Gareth? No, I've never, I've never, I've never heard that joke before. Haven't you? Oh, I have many times. Um. Well, anyway, so the one production I've heard that I thought utilized Mary in the best way was a Dutch production from two thousand and five where in the middle of the 39 lashes, she jumps in screaming, stop, 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 and then sings, can we start again, please? So you go from this real build-up of, fch, 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 and she's screaming like, stop, stop. It's really fucking intense, and I would have loved to have seen it. Mm. And I think if I was to, to ever direct it, I would try out how that looks on stage and, and how that plays mm. out visually. Mm. But if it if it became a bit too bash you over the head or whatnot, you know what I mean, like too in your face or gratuitous, then I would turn it back to how it is. Um, because can we start again, please? It's a beautiful, beautiful song. But as I say, Mary is wasted in that whole show. Not not being a priest or one of the apostles or anything like that. She's really just there to make Jesus feel good. Yeah. And she doesn't do a very good job of it. She's an afterthought. I don't know. I do say, ooh, Mary, you know, this feels good. Specifically, Jesus says that. <laughs> like that. In like that, that delivery. Yeah, that was good. Has it? Has it? Yeah, that's, that was actually straight from my performance. He's like, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I can't remember the lyrics. But at one point he says, ooh, that is good. So she, she's doing the right things. It's just sort just of off. not very well because otherwise he'd be saying it more often. But it is his job oh, to. Jesus loving it. Oh, does he? Anyways. Well, that's our, our first Andrew Lloyd Webber. Really? So... That's that's pretty good. You guys haven't done yeah. cats yet. That's the best. No, no, we'll save mm. the best for last. 
We did we did the sound of music. Fuck me. Is that Andrew Le Weber? I don't know. I don't know. No, no. no it's Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah. No, no, no it all sounds yeah, the same. No. I haven't seen the sound of music, and I have not seen Cats, and I will never. <laughs> <laughs> we should move on. We should move on to the um, and this week, our guest Vin handed over one of his favourite albums. <laughs> Legit. I, mean, I, I was listening to it going, I wonder yep. where Aaron's going to go with this one. So, Oh, where do I fucking start? <laughs> I'm surprised Jesus Christ Superstar mm. and Corn are very similar in their in the vibes. So I can't believe Why? Because they're both dead to me. The underlying. Wow. The underlying. <laughs> dead to you. Dead to you. Literally Corn, one of the greatest influential bands in my in my entire life. I wasn't expecting that. People never do. I, I no, I was I, I was waiting for some really. So, so the, what happened was, shit. is when I was younger, I listened to a lot of gangster rap, so like Tupac, Ice Cube, DMX, and stuff like that. Mm. And and I was listening to Ice Cube, and I was like, oh, maybe eleven or twelve. And there was this song called "Fuck Dying," right? Mm. And there's this filthy, filthy riff underneath it, and it's like, fuck, that sounds awesome. I mean, I probably didn't say it like that. I was. 11 so I was probably like oh my god that sounds amazing and then I was like who is it and it says featuring corn I'm like okay I'll give them a chance oh yeah 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 and I checked out their uh their stuff and I was just like holy shit this is crazy and then I started listening to it and you know just got into it got straight into like trash and oh trash and somebody someone and these are, these are songs off the yeah. yeah off this album that we're about to yeah. tear apart. I'm yes. assuming yeah. about to rip a new one. Be gentle, Aaron. You can can, can you see what I got? It's a trash collector. If I turn this around, every cable's going to fall out, and we're straight. <laughs> we could just start again. No. Nah. Can you see the screen no, though? Because it's facing the other way. I can feel the oh. energy coming. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. You idiot, Stimpy. <laughs> Anyways, I got a um a Wally. Pencil holder. Oh, cool. and it's a ceramic okay. thing. That's a, I, that's a little trash collector. That's cool. Isn't that rather indicative of my life that I'm so obsessed with something that collects trash? <laughs> if you're into trash, you should love corn. <laughs> All right, so I wrote a review. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. You gave me corn issues, and you're not the first. <laughs> That's funny. When I first saw the cover, I said, Corn, I don't remember having corn. <laughs> So I pressed play and found the first grain in the record, a track called Dead. Oh, what a shame. Too bad. The end. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't mean to be callous. But honestly, to begin an album with bagpipes didn't so much amaze me as it did left me with sore gums from gritting my teeth. Lyrically, there are a few kernel of truths that hit the ear, but as one would expect, oh, as one would expect, but corn flowers most in their music. But even then, the emo riddled why me tone of this field of harvested self hatred <laughs> felt more like the soundtrack to a serial killer stalking someone through long grass. It's actually a great, great analogy. And that's a vibe I can't quite cotton onto without a mesh crop top, a pier slip, and the seeds of self-doubt on the tip of my tongue. Not to forget the chip on my shoulder, which by now is more of a Dorito. <laughs> no wonder Gareth's always in a shitty mood with music like this. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> wow. Fuck. I'm the happy one. Where's the fun? Where's the camp? Ultimately, this middling music made very little impact on my week, which is a starch difference from last week. Although I find it funny that Korn has ears, because clearly they don't listen to their own music. Wow. I almost preferred the static at the end, <laughs> one star to the album, but five stars to my pun-riddled review. <laughs> oh, jeez, we're rating ourselves now. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking oath. I'd... You know how many Korn puns were in that? Not bad, not bad. It was very funny. We had, it was, wasn't it? We had the first grain in the record. Because mm. obviously records have grains. Well done, Aaron. That was a clever one. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> just want to know how many people thought their records were fucked 
when they were listening to Dirty, and, yeah. and they just jumped up and went, "What? What the fuck is going?" Mm. It's not even like if it was a few seconds mm. or even thirty seconds. It's like half the fucking song. It's yeah. just that. I was like, "What the hell was that?" Mm. So yeah. Um, well, it's funny because I'm a bit of a moron, <laughs> as we've established <laughs> by what we're in twenty nine episodes yeah. by now. Yeah. We know what a fuckwit I am. Uh, and yet, maybe 10 seconds into that static, I said out loud, oh, that's clever, and turned it off. <laughs> so... Hear it till the end. Uh, no, because I'm not that fucking stupid. That's why. Because no, sometimes there's like a hidden track there. Yeah. So, which was what everyone was waiting for. Yes. And, and I, think, I think that's the idea. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got the impression it was meant to be like you, f- you fell asleep watching TV like we used mm. to do. And you'd wake up and the channel had ended yeah. or whatever, and it was on static. So um, back, back before fish cam and stuff like that, I thought it was clever. It was funny. Okay. But again, I'm not stupid enough to fall for it and listen to three and a half minutes of it <laughs> in surround sound. That was actually why I chose this. So that was my joke failed. Oh, I chose yeah. it just to just do that to you guys. Y- you should have done your research. Oh, yeah. Gareth has been trying to outwit me for 29 episodes now, and he has fallen flat on his face nearly every single time. <laughs> every time. He every thinks time. he has it over me, and he, he he has pulled some pretty dirty stunts on me too, I'd say. I could believe that. Gareth does look dodgy. Oh, um, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big new metal fan at all. Not many people are. Oh, is this new metal? This is it? new metal. This yeah. is new metal with an N U. Oh, okay, I can't fucking keep up, man. Um, oh, it's no, kind of old, like old, from yeah. the nineties and yeah. early noughties. And they had a bit of a resurgence. I mean, no, they... I know new metal as in N U. Yeah. I know how to spell new metal and what it is. I don't mean as in chronologically new or yeah. old. I'm, not, yeah. I'm, I'm just not. Sometimes I'm not sure how stupid you are. That's all. <laughs> so I just thought I'd spell everything. So, all well, right, you hear that, listeners? <laughs> It's had a bit of. You guys have been following along. They have had a bit of resurgence though, because they, I mean, they headline download. Shit. Was it the first download when they came to Australia, and they only did Sydney and Melbourne, or they only did Melbourne? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. So yeah. I didn't see that one, but they've had kind of a, a bit of a resurgence late. But it's you know it's legit. It's legit. I love them. I love the groove. I love the filth. Got a real. You know, it's atmospheric. Yeah. I give it that. It it's a real, you've got to get into a kind of a, yeah, okay. you, you get into a headspace with it, yeah. I think. So. It's not about technical music. No. And music isn't about technicality, which is what irritates me no, about metal heads. How they're like, oh yeah. I mean, these guys are like, not, they're just good songwriters, despite your opinions, Aaron. Sorry, buddy. But <laughs> Ooh, like, they you come on to my and, show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. They just write catchy tunes and and it's I just love obviously it's my like one of my favorite bands. It's just filthy groove. Look, I am not unfamiliar with corn. Yeah. I just love filthy groove and that's if there was a genre that wasn't new metal they'd be called filthy groove. Filthy groove. Would they? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I would call it. Yeah. It's just That would be a good porn name. <laughs> um I'm filthy groove. Yeah, not a good porn I'm name. Porn sure. name, yes, not a good porn name. If someone calls you Filthy Groove, <laughs> if someone, if your nickname was the Filthy Groove, yeah, and you were either, you, yeah, no, nah, I don't want to. We probably end up cutting this, right? That's that's what that's a, are you yeah. going right. <laughs> like, it's just still you don't not want that. <laughs> Hi, I'm the Filthy Groove. My, oh, my, speak my, for my eyes twitching, trying to work it out yeah, in my head. So it. you don't want that nonsense. Yeah. I don't, I don't well, know. that's your lack of imagination. Oh, um, I think it's. Anyways, I'm not unfamiliar with corn. Mm. I guess just what I remembered of them was maybe a little bit more exciting than what I got on this album. Which this is yeah, probably stuff like Freak on the Leash. Yeah, like, so this is, is probably more... their like very experimental. But that's okay. So that's another thing I love about corn, though, because all of their albums are different. Yeah, I like that. Like mm. none of their albums sound the same. They're all they're Madonna of new metal. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a huge compliment because Madonna's fucking great. Yeah. I love Madonna. I wish I could see the look on Gareth's face right now. I'm trying to work it out. I wasn't sure if that was an insult or not. I wish I could see the look on your face after after hearing him say that. <laughs> Let's, have a Let's go to a break. G'day listeners, Aaron here. While me and Gareth are taking a break, 
I thought now would be a great time to spill my guts. Well, not my guts. The fully fabulous Kristen Johnston's, whose hilarious yet harrowing memoir, Guts, details her roller coaster ride through all the excesses of Hollywood and the toll it can take on even the fiercest of bitches. Keijo has shed all pretense by opening up her heart and soul in this gripping tale, which will leave readers reaffirmed of their own inner strength and ability to kick some ass in this world. You may know her as Sally Solomon or as Joan Collins's bedrockian daughter, but once you've dived into Kristen's guts, you'll come to know that she's nothing short of a warrior. Available now where all good books are sold, grab your copy of Guts today. And we are back. Their dirty bass sound is awesome. Mm. I love, I love that. Filth, yeah, love it. It is no, it is good. Filthy groove. Um, it, it's I, I think when when new metal hit, um, I was entrenched in traditional metal and thrash and and speed metal. And so like the bad metal genres, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. just yeah. Like grunge came in and I just fucked that shit up. Yeah, if you don't like grunge, you're not going to like new metal. It's basically metal version grunge. It's the same thing. Yeah, I know. And here, so here's the thing. So now, listening back, I was like, this is the shit I missed out because I was a metal elitist. And I was like, this is metal. This is not. I wasn't. But yeah. when your ears tune to a certain type of music and that's what you listen to, when someone comes along... And there's, like, technically, there's no fleshy guitar solos. There's no soaring vocals a lot of the vocals are really restrained and quite mixed back yeah um which i love yeah no we, but funny you should say that because the two new the new songs that we've released we specifically decided so there's no soaring vocals in any of these new songs whereas the last album there was yeah. uh, we decided and it was hard in the studio i like the last album you do <laughs> I like the last album. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. Yeah, it, it's hard um, for me to do that. It's hard. It's hard to restrain, be restrained. And yeah, I had to keep getting. I had to keep getting pulled back by the the mixer and yeah. the boys. They were like, "Nah, Vin, too much power. Mm. Pull it back. Pull it back. Don't not so high. Lower the lower the key. Yeah. yeah, which is which is what we wanted in vocals. Or yeah, are you talking about vocals? Yeah, I must have switched off for a second. <laughs> Um, no, it's the internet goes in and oh, out. Oh, okay, sorry. And so I miss words, okay? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to switch I'm, off. I'm downstairs. Um, okay. I don't think we've got the great, the best thing down here. But anyway. Um, okay, so that's all right. I was just making sure I'm on the same page. Oh, that's, that's cool. Anyway. Um, so how many stars was that? I forgot. <laughs> it was half of one. Was that <laughs> seriously? No, it was one. It was, no, it was one star. Yeah, I didn't expect yeah. much. Yeah, no, I'd, look, I, you, you, you know by now, well, those who listen to our show, Vin, would know by now what does get me excited, and it's typically the camp year that it is. This was very <laughs> what? emo kid. Corn is so campy. Meh, meh. This is like classic Halloween. This is the yeah, but that was that was juxtaposed against Monty Python. Dude, I reckon Aaron would like ghosts. This that's campy. Oh, do you know what? Um, we've oh, ah yeah. <laughs> the other one was Ghost. Oh no, kidding! Mm. And it was early Ghost. So there is still time. There is still time. You can change it. We can change it because I, yeah. But yeah, yeah, the ghost one threw me for mm. a six. I'm like, what? Okay. So I, I have a lot of energy. So middling music gets me very antsy. I don't like ballads. I'm not a fan either. Um, You didn't, you didn't like um, Parkway Drive either. No, I didn't like Parkway Drive. Reverence. Um, Reverence. I fucking love that album. Legitimately, dude, that song, um, Absolute Power though. Yeah. Like that, I'm just like, oh, I want to kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm driving to that song, I'm just like, fuck, I don't give a fuck what the speed limit is. <laughs> I don't care. Get out of yeah, my dude, way. that fucking song, man. That yeah. whole album, it's a Kronos, that whole but, album, dude, no, so I'm, fucking good. I'm, I'm too happy. I'm too happy. Ah, uh, see, I'm not a big fan of unclean vocals. There, there was that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like <clean song. laughs> dude, you, dude, you do Aaron, did you just sing Parkway Drive? Just that? <laughs> that was bang on, bro. That was that Winston. Was bang that was like, on. More Winston than Winston. Um, but you, yeah. you do both, don't you? If I ever give up, man, can you, Aaron, can you fill in for me in Tempest, please? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, buddy. How, how do you go from, because our, our, we often have guests ask about metal musicians and how they can go from clean singing yep. to unclean 
Like he just gets angry. Um, All right, I'm, what's your I'm technique? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it sits on a spot on the throat that you've found that's comfortable and get your mind I'm out gonna, of the gutter, Gareth. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys something that I've never told anyone. Oh, no. This is going to be revealed on your show. An exclusive. An exclusive? I don't sing any of my cleans live. Yeah. It's all backup recorded. Don't no. you? <laughs> Look at Gareth's face. Oh, okay. <laughs> you pull an Ashley Simpson. How? No. What? God, no. Um, look, so basically, I've never... <laughs> I've never had any any professional training, as you could probably tell by our songs, and I don't know how I do it. I just know that there is a physical feeling. So when I sing clean and scream, if I want to move into it, I there's like a mm-hmm. a groove, yeah, that I can sort of fall into that allows me to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's how I would describe it best. And so that's that. <laughs> that was that was quite it's worth. It's the mystical, the mystical. This is how I do it. It's all very tequila helps a lot. Mm. Oh, just the one, nah, man. Yeah. Um, should have brought a bottle tonight. I th- I thought about it, but you're driving, so I am driving yeah. a, d- a d- great distance. Get get yourself training because you've got a lot of talent. All right. Thanks, Aaron. And oh, wait. He's like, but. <laughs> can I but finish my sentence? Shit. Just because it started off with a compliment doesn't mean it was going <laughs> to end with one. <laughs> shit. What show are you on? Anyways. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I think you should because my concern for, for any singer is mm. not doing it properly and fucking up your throat forever. So look after your throat. And I, I'm telling you this from one professional to another. From one experienced singer <laughs> to another. <laughs> I can't even fucking say it. With why, is Gareth, fo- why is Gareth with laughing so hard? Um, no, but I, I think you should because then at least... Because both... That, that'll that help both your yes. metal and yeah. musical, I think. Um, and I'm not no, saying no, you're no. doing it wrong or anything mm. like that. I'm just saying to make sure that you don't forever damage your vocal cords, because that well, is um, your instrument. Lemon and honey in your tea. Oh, I, I drink. Oh, no, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Whoa. I will have a fucking fit. <laughs> Dude, I, I literally drink lemon, ginger, tea. Fuck you. Lemon, ginger, tea with honey almost every night. Is that oh, right? right? Just yeah. before bed. Uh, uh, when I'm reading, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. I like to read, so I'm not very good. It takes me a long time. To read? Yeah, I'm not very good at it. No. But, you know, <laughs> I'm, I read comics mostly. Oh, okay. So pictures, yeah. Yeah. I, I basically, it, I think it's a colouring in book that I read. I'm good at reading. I'm just not good well, at writing. So do one, you, sh- you should be good at the other. Reading puts me to sleep. So. Yes, it does. It's very good. Yeah, it's yeah. if I can't sleep, I would just... My yeah. iPad and open a book and read that. Just not my books. No, I'm reading um, Dostoevsky. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, no, I, I I think you should look at Julie Andrews and how her vocals are forever gone. And I know that was an operation that wasn't mm. because of misuse. Anyways, Gareth, your guest, you do the interview. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to talk about because I wanted to talk about um, Awakening, the mm. video, which yeah. is is the song. The song's pretty amazing because you literally get bashed in the face. Yep, that is that, that was our idea. Yeah, that is not a like a. Temp- traditional tempest rising song there's no. no intro it's just fuck you exactly yep um, which is amazing the video was filmed at the regal theater yep in perth yep empty yep now was that uh with, with covid we no that that was my idea that was the, you just wanted one old dude and ice cream yep i basically so i wanted uh and he's a mate of mine his name's jamie mccanty he's he runs slim jim in the fats okay yeah yep. so he's quite prolific in perth uh, I wanted, um, the idea was, and yeah, I don't want to spoil it for the millions of people that are about to watch it after this interview, but, but like, so it tie, obviously it ties into the end. So the sinister beginning ends with a sinister ending. And I mm. quite liked how, you know, people would be like, why the fuck is there just one guy? And why is he eating? How weird? What's going on? And then boom, you're like, what the fuck? Just like, you're like, why is he, why is he, what the fuck is going on? And it's like, I'm liking the music, but why? 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 What's happening? And then at the end, you're like, oh. Even some people to this day are kind of like, 
weird. Why'd you do that, Mike? Just fucking deal with it, man. It's a music video. I thought, I thought it was a great video. Uh, Thanks, video. Um, but I, I honestly thought, okay, you've used COVID. You've used it in a really hmm. good way because, and I don't know at the time you were shooting, were we, could we do shit like that? Or, cause we've been pretty lucky. We have. No, I think it was pretty, pretty open. They were, they were having shows at the oh, okay. venue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I thought, okay, cause I like thought 50% you just capacity. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't yeah, going to have so. any people there anyway. The idea, that idea was set prior to COVID. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. All right. There you go. For some different. Just works. Yeah. Just music videos are different, basically. You make music video. I hate bands, that, despite we we did one of this, but like, I just don't like how for a small amount of money, you can put a tiny bit of flavor yep. to a music and not just be yep. just playing the song. With some rubble and shaky cameras and some some storm clouds just, just no, pro shooters you. playing live yeah 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 and i loved like i do enjoy getting in the makeup like i do enjoy getting the eyeliner on and it suits me i look badass yeah so. yeah you do <laughs> yeah. a little bit sexy but you know oh I'm, yeah okay yeah but no i do enjoy it so yeah just why not right yeah, yeah. no it works fuck it and it works so and that's the thing there's a lot of and especially australian bands and like you said you you only need to spend a little bit of money and just make it that much better and and have a good idea and there's so many not even just perth bands or, or whatever just yeah they don't they don't spend the it's almost like the... I mean, people live on youtube like my my kids fucking if it's not on youtube they don't even know it exists they don't watch mm. tv anymore if you've if you've got a video and it's on YouTube and people are watching it, people are watching it. That videos, I just I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. And I get yeah. why some people do. And I've seen some lyric videos that are so well produced. Yeah, yeah. Produced. They should have just put yeah. It on it's essentially video. a music video with lyrics. Yeah, like, yeah. With but lyrics. it's also <clears throat> having said that, it's also a very cheap option for visuals. So we have two lyric videos back when we first started, and at one point I was like, let's make lyric videos for every one of our songs, okay. even if we do a music video for it, a lyric video as well. Because one, it's content, okay. right? And I hate yep. that fucking word, but... Con yeah. yeah, content is king. But it's true. Yeah. 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 Fuck off with your fucking content. <laughs> it's not content. Yeah. Artists produce content. I'm an artist. Yeah, Vin's yeah. an artist. <laughs> I, yeah, I know you are. And I am, right? Okay. But, but sitting there talking... No, oh, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about my novels, right? But... And, and I so think about it, I wrote a 250,000 word trilogy, right? And that's content. Some asshole playing a fucking video game oh, right. and getting yeah, a million yeah. viewers and oh, calling terrible. it content. Oh, yeah. My missus watches, Sorry. like, in the I'm background, like, when she's doing stuff, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I can't handle their voices. Or they're just like, like I played this game for like 10 hours and I've clicked this mouse like 1 billion times on the same spot. <laughs> now give me money, little bitches. <laughs> like, I'm like, look, man, yeah. good on you. Good on you. you good on you, the... but you're a fucking dick. Yeah, you are. You've, you've just, you've got good <laughs> yeah. followers and you're a dick. Yeah. yeah. Good on I'm them. Good. That. Hey, man, that's it. the yeah. world we live in, boys. Sure. Sure. All right. That's it. If I could do it, if I could play games, and I probably could. I reckon if I put a camera on me and play games, people would enjoy it because I'm a fucking idiot when I play games. <laughs> like, I'm, I scream. I'm just like, fuck this fucking game. I reckon it'd be fantastic. But I cannot be fucked doing that, nor do I want to. And you have dignity. Whoa, whoa, whoa let's not. And integrity. Let's not go too far. Aaron, you have never met me, my friend. Okay, if you've ever seen me in real life, you would never have said that. Take the compliment. <laughs> I very, very rarely compliment any of our guests. So take the compliment. No, it's like, that's that bullshit. I compliment them all the time. Thank you very much, Gareth. <laughs> Even, yes, you did. You said that's that's oh, true. That's you agreed with me when I <laughs> joked. Anyway, when I joke. Anyways, no, that's there is no, there is no dignity yeah. in that rough. at all, and it's an insult to artists. Think about it. For for thousands of years, we stood, we stand in caves looking at yeah. cave paintings, and now we have these fucking wankers playing video games, calling it content. Oh my god! No, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, it's it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't. 
I thought it was just me that didn't get it. But I mean, my, my youngest daughter used to. I don't know if she still does, but she used to love that shit. So, but yeah, I know. I know. No, ground her for life. Sorry. <laughs> and talk, please, because I'm I'm getting worked up. And I, <laughs> yeah, I know. This is why I'm trying to move away. And I want to talk about the hollow cause. I'm oh, ready yeah. to punch because someone. this is pretty amazing. Yeah, hollow the cause. holocaust. The holocaust. Hollow cause. That's yeah, a bit depressing. You could say it, could say it twice. Oh, okay. Um, I did a little bit of a little bit of digging in it. So that was recently. So that was. Oh, this was yeah, the this um, was Sunday. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. what's yeah. The, yeah, what's was the story on? So the Cash, the the creator, he uh, wrote a role that he thought I'd be good in, which is um, Marduk, and Marduk is a Jewish. Uh, actually, I don't think he's Jewish. He's the cover like and spoiler alert. I'm not going to see it now because I know the end. Yeah, it, it was so funny when I because obviously I knew because I should, sang the We songs. could cut that out if you don't want. Yeah, yeah, you can. But like, but when they when the people found out at the in the reading, yeah. everyone had no everyone, idea except oh. for me and Cash, and it was awesome. Oh, Just okay. watching all their reactions as like, yeah. So at the synagogue, we had to be like super careful because the actual you've got a, it's an actual it's a current synagogue, yeah, current synagogue, yeah. the biggest one in in the southern hemisphere. Okay, yeah, is what I was told. Oh. Um, the uh, oh, what's he called? The rabbi was there. Mm-hmm. And was overseeing everything, so we, we had to, couldn't swear, couldn't say Jesus, none of that stuff. Oh. Yeah, because it's hardcore, hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, it's their house. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I got a, I hired a goddamn suit. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hired a goddamn yeah, suit for this suit. shit. It looked good. Looked I mean, good. I did look fucking good. Oh yeah. But <laughs> I hi- I don't <laughs> like wearing suits. I fucking hate it. I hired a suit for this thing. Um. And we were there for about six hours and filmed a music video for promo and for like showing for Cash's investors and stuff like so that. So that was just the promo? Just the promo. Wow. But he put okay. a lot of effort That's in. That's huge. Yeah, Considering there was, the venue and everything else. There's 20 musicians there, yeah. conductor, two lighting guys. There was, yeah, it was a big thing. <laughs> yeah. It was good though. Yeah. I, I love, I love that shit, hey. Yeah. Like legit. It's just, it's you good. Just want to just dip into a bit of a growl. You just get it. No, I see. I'm not a big, as I said before, Even and you were shocked when I said this. I know. I know. I'm still, not big I just on still the think you're looking at my face and lying to me. No, I, I'm not big on growling. I, I prefer cleans to screams. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm such a big fan of musical theater and stuff like that. Yeah. Because very rarely do you get screams in musical theater. No. Yeah. But I love showing the musical theater folks. Tempest. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. literally uh, today, because I was at I was at a shoot for um Priscilla Queen of the Desert because I did I do photography yeah. for so I'm doing photography for that. It's at the Crown in a couple of weeks. I, I was showing the other guys like yeah, so I'm in, I'm a singer as well. Like oh yeah, what do you get up to? And I was like check it out. Yeah, and yeah. showed him like part of the last Tempest set we played at um the Frio Social Frio. Oh okay. And yep. Yeah. Oh, um. For Slay Fest. Slay Yeah, yeah. Yep. Dude, it was fu- it was fucking reckless, yeah. and uh, yeah, I showed him this, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. 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 I I quite enjoyed their reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They blow their minds pretty much. So yeah, it's good, it's good times. Hmm. Who's in the Priscilla yeah, the cast? Uh so Peter Rose there, Yep, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, yep, that, I that's that took cast. some photos okay. in today. Who else? Yeah, um, Do we know. Look, I'm not going to lie. You don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> it's okay. Don't know. <laughs> I'm, don't I'm know trying to find that. out. That's all. But yeah, Peter Rosson is, uh, he's, a, he's so fucking funny. It's, he is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just um, yeah. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, the musical is not a musical. It's a jukebox musical. That's correct. So we will yes. not be covering it on this show. No. Oh, that's a shame. Can I be honest with you? I like it's, that movie. It's not very good. It's... <laughs> Duke Mock, Duke's bo- Duke box musicals suck. Yes. Okay. You don't want it, um, guys. No. No, we haven't. But we've had we've done <laughs> okay. a lot of musicals that have had standards that have been yeah. on Duke boxes. So yeah. we've done the reverse. Um, no, we're not going to do Duke box musicals. And okay. If we are going to, it's going to be Tommy by the Who. Okay. Which <laughs> that's cool. Which I don't. Which I don't know. So I mean, I what? know it, but is I don't. Is that technically a jukebox I, I musical? Though? No, no, it's not. No, it can't be. No, well, it's no. a rock opera. Yeah, it's, it's a, rock still a rock opera. Yeah. I know, but that's yeah. the same. That's I mean, like, I, that'll be I the closest, know, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and that will be 
in six Studied weeks. It. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, and cool. All right. not for the episode. We may have the original Broadway Tommy on. Oh, that's cool. But Who was that? Michael Severus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes. Sorry. I've seen him in other stuff. You have. So yeah. I'm very, very excited by that episode. Yes. Continue. I know. How do you guys get all these people? I sleep so with I'm everyone. Sorry. I was going, how did you get V men? Oh, yeah. I am very sought after. You guys are very <laughs> yeah, lucky. Yeah, I know. We had to, we had yeah. to juggle so, schedules and yeah. I appreciate you guys having me on seriously though. No, no. It's great to have you on. I don't do these and I would like, these are quite entertaining. I can see why you do it. It's quite fun. Yeah. Are you guys right. signed? We'll never be signed. Yeah. Like unless the deal is like ridiculous, just independence is so much better. Yep. Yep. You know, and that's cool. You've got, you do what you got to do. Yeah. But, um, oh, I almost, um, I almost was in Les Mis. Les Mis was pretty wicked at the crown. Which one? Les Mis are up. Oh. I love Les Mis. Right. I, um, there's, they were doing a production at the crown and I got callbacks oh, to you? Jean Valjean and then it fell through. It was, that's it was just me and one role. other guy. Yeah. Fuck I fucking that love guy. it. Who was that guy? No, no, I was going to get it. never even heard from I was him gonna, again. I was going to get it. It was, it, but it, the show got cancelled because they didn't get the, the rights properly. Oh. So we've got to wait. Yeah, it's fucking... <laughs> took, Oops. took like two months yeah. of my life. Yeah. Practicing and learning and sh- And then like... And so it was yours. It was yours? No, no, no. But I was, I was confident yeah. um, that I wasn't going to get it. <laughs> and uh, no, <laughs> I was pretty confident. The, the reason I was so confident is because after I came out of my audition, I saw the other guy at mm-hmm. a pub or whatever. Yeah. And he was just like, man, you've got this. And I'm like... oh. That's very nice of you to say. Maybe he's just fucking with you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I was confident I was going to get it. <laughs> so I was agreeing with him. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, it was intense. It was awesome. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, which is super. And that's a star making role, Valjean and Javert in a lot yes. of ways. The, the two of them are star making roles for men. Mm. Um, so to get, yeah, to get those parts in a professional production is a, a major coup. For anyone, even though it's a you know tourist yeah. musical, it's been done to death. Uh, yeah, it's it so is. Good. It's it's fucking great. The music is fantastic. So good. Yeah. The um, and I want to wrap things up, but I need to ask you this one because have you ever had the the conversation with? Just goes bang. Mm. Um, are the guys going to go? Vin, go and do your thing. We'll just chill. Chances are no, but that would be a non, you know, that's how it would be. Yeah, okay. Because the band, and I'll always be in the band. Yeah. Like, I'll never not be in the band unless the band, you know, explodes. Or but, a piano falls on yeah. your head. But, or that, if I die. But, but musical theatre, if the opportunity came up, absolutely. And I, and the, and Les Mis had a set time, so it was going to be in May. And I said to them, I'm not gigging for two months month of practice month yeah. of re- uh, shows yeah. and they're like yeah that's fine so yeah absolutely so if, if that came in like in the middle of like perth rocks or because you had perth rocks and slow mm. fest you've been i mean since we've opened up again you guys have been pretty busy you've got another one coming up with um we with are Chaos not divine we're not playing that oh i'm not going to that one so yeah we're not playing right. that because our gets our basis just gave not our basis gave birth but he's got a kid and DJ left, which you didn't know. I didn't know. He was on our Facebook. But wasn't that yeah. like two days so ago? So DJ left because he's having a kid. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah I knew that. Good. So he's having a kid. He's left. Yeah. Um, so we're taking a break for a little bit, writing some stuff, finding a new guitarist. Okay. But yeah, DJ, he's family orientated. He's he's taking a break from music. You got to do it. Man. You got to really do it. So it's, it's yeah, it's hard. It's life. But Tempest is still there, and we're not. DJ's a ridiculously good guitarist, so we have to find someone that is as good, if not better. Yeah, right. Which would be hard. Yeah. Because yep. he's very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Big shoes. Big shoes to fill. Impossibly big shoes. Oh, ouch. Look out, Perth. Mm. Budding to. Ca- so, what, what would you do? Do you reckon you would like. Audition? You'd chuck a thing out there and just. Yeah. Just. But it's a pretty. Do you have you? I mean, you know the kind of guitarist you want. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna say. Yes, there are a couple of people we're chatting to. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, diamond in the rough scenario, 
There are yeah. a lot of good guitarists out there yeah. that aren't in bands. They're just guitar for themselves. Finally. Never been in bands. No, unless, yeah. yeah, unless someone goes, hey, or, you know, you've got to, it's just, you know, it's, it's just uh, circumstantial and, mm. you know, not everyone's going, I'm a good guitarist. I'm going to go look for a band. Could yeah. be a guy that doesn't think he's very good, but it's phenomenal. doesn't know it. You know, there's yeah. lots of different factors. So, yeah. so there we go. Start a, start a YouTube, start Twitch streaming your guitars. Oh, that's a good idea. The guy that does that, um, Grim, I don't know, he does, a, he does like YouTube, YouTube videos and he dresses all up in um, like a skeleton and he's, he's obviously got a green screen behind him and he's got this awesome shit and he's, he's got the hood on and he's... Oh, <laughs> really? He, yeah. That's he's cool. on, um, there's a Facebook page, a Perth metal scene, uh, West Australian metal scene or one of those. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Yeah. Um, and he chucks videos up on there every now and I don't get it. I don't yeah. get it. I mean, he's he's... He's just shredding. Yeah. Like, fuck. Just having um, a good time. And it's like, yeah, he's just, and maybe he is already a working muso and this is just his you don't, yeah, you know, alter his ego. Alter ego. Yeah. Oh, good plug there. Nice. Uh, Tempest Rising. <laughs> alter ego. Stream it now on Spotify. Yeah. Buy the t shirt. There's still a few t shirts there. <laughs> no, they keep getting shredded. <laughs> anyway, um, we should wrap things up because I'm keeping Kill. you up. I'm going to go pick up my girlfriend from work. Oh, okay. Because I borrowed a car today because my car's in the shop. Shit. All right, go and get your girlfriend. Um, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Thank Boys, thanks for having me, it's been, honestly. It's been awesome. It's been a... Thank you, Aaron. It's been a, um, a look into both worlds and someone who, who lives in both worlds. So. I exist in both. <laughs> and at the same time, neither. <laughs> uh, don't be offended, Finn. I don't laugh at anyone's right. jokes. <laughs> Like, listen to the show. I barely ever laughed. That wasn't anyway. a joke. That's, no, that, that was just... That, that, that was, was a performance. It's not, it's not that I wasn't funny. It's that... Just because yeah, it was, <laughs> just because you assume my, my personality is a joke, yeah. that's on you, bro. No, it's, it's not that I wasn't funny. It's that I'm a cold, hard bitch. So, making me laugh, you got to catch me yeah. off guard. Yeah, right. That, yeah. Um, that just makes me like you even more, Aaron. Cool. Yeah. I like me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have... Do okay. we have albums to swap? Because I have no fucking idea what the next album what is. What episode are we on? Let me have a look at Excel. I don't okay, know. Uh, Josh Lehman next know. week. Again, deepest apologies for the poor quality in the audio there. I will fix that up as soon as I can get my hands on the raw files. Anyways, next week, Gareth's going to be taking some time off for a little bit. So he's leaving me in charge. Mwahaha. So my first extra special guest co-host is going to be Jonathan X from episode 10, and we're going to be joined by the lovable Broadway star Josh Lehman. And the albums we're going to be doing are The Skyhooks, Hits and Riffs, as well as Miracle City Australian Cast. So we're going to be doing our first Australian musical next week with Gareth out of the studio, and I'm going to, and also an Australian glam rock band. Uh, so basically it's going to be an education for these two industry professionals and I'm going to look like the size of an ant in the end. Anyways, look forward to that. I'll be dropping that in a couple of hours or a couple of days. I don't know. Anyways, Gareth can do the socials. Awesome. All right. Um, and as always, people, don't forget to rate and review. Leave a comment. It's how people find us. If you want to check us out on the Twitters, it's at Thrash and Treasure. We're also on Instagram at Thrash and Treasure. Like our Facebook page, face at Thrash and Treasure Podcast on Insta, is it? Okay, there you go. Anyway, like our Facebook page, facebook.com Thrash and Treasure. You can come and say hello to me on the Twitters. I am at not Gareth. Also, check out the Tonneson Tales at the Tonneson Tales.com. No, I got your fucking website right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got no, I got your website. No. Anyway, check out the Toniston Tales at the Toniston Tales dot com. Uh they're great books. Buy them all. There's three of them. Um so check those out. I've been Gareth. That's been Aaron. I have. That's been Vin. He has. Hey hey. You at home. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and see you next time. Hey, Ray.